scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when he bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. Let's learn a lesson from the life of Mordecai and then we pray. When we look at the lesson, I define humility and then we pray. Esther chapter 2. Esther is a book that I've studied again and again. And for every time I study the book of Esther, I am amazed at how many things I did not see or have not found hidden in that treasure. There are two books in the Bible that are named after women. One is Esther, the other is Ruth. And the book of Esther is a very interesting expression of the destructive the, the destructive character of pride and the lifting power of genuine humility. Hallelujah. The Bible starts with a very interesting story. A king and it, the Bible is very vocal about the achievements of this king, Ahasuerus. A king who was head over 127 provinces. That was a profoundly great man. Then the Bible tells us that there was this woman who was queen called Vashti. Now listen very carefully. The Bible says that it was in those days, it was the custom of kings to call other people and just celebrate and flaunt their glory. The extent of their sovereign power. And so he called for a feast. And the Bible declares that he invited Esther to come. And Esther refused. I would always say, I mean Vashti, Vashti forgot that the only reason she was queen was because she married the king. Not because she won any war. Not because she had the ability to fight. The only reason why she was queen was because her husband was king. Very powerful lesson. You never find Esther saying sorry. I mean Vashti, I keep saying Esther. You never find Vashti saying sorry, not once. Even when the king was grieved, she did not see a reason for that. And listen carefully, how dangerous pride can be. The 127 provinces were not attacked by enemies. Everything was still in place in the palace, but one woman's pride was about to divide the kingdom. To the point that the elders and advisors came and said, listen, if this becomes a habit, other women will model it and you will wreck your kingdom. Banish this woman. So the Bible says she was banished and a call was made all across the provinces. And there was this man called Mordecai. The Bible says his place was of service was at the gate of the king. And so he called his little daughter now adopted daughter who did not have a father and mother hadassah we call her esther she came and to cut the long story short she found favor and became queen then the bible says something happened very interesting in esther chapter 2 when we read from verse 19 the bible says certain people among the king's cabinet decided to conspire to kill the king Hallelujah. And next verse, verse 20. 
Do we have verse 20? The Bible says that when the king found out through the ministry of Mordecai, he found out that there were certain people who were out to destroy his life, two of them. The Bible says they were judged, they were hung, and everything finished for the sake of time. Then the Bible tells us something very, very interesting. Let's jump to chapter 6. For sake of time. You find what I just said in chapter 2 from verse 19 to 23. 19 to 23. Now let's go to chapter 6 from verse 1. There's a very powerful lesson I want us to learn. The Bible says how that Haman, there was this treacherous man who happened to be one of the closest persons to the king and this man was determined to annihilate the jews his arch enemy being mordecai are we together in spite of all the honor that he had the bible says that every time he saw mordecai at the gate he would be angry and he went to seek counsel among his friends and they told him they said listen since you have goodwill with the king why don't you talk to the king that you hate this man called Mordecai so he would grant you access to hang him. And so the Bible says the next day he was already preparing that by the next day he would make that request to kill and to destroy Mordecai. And the Bible says that night, 6 verse 1, Esther. On that night, the king could not sleep and he commanded to bring the book of records of the chronicles and they were read before the king follow this story closely the bible says it was found written that mordecai had told big Thana and teresh it was told of two of the king's chamberlains the keepers of the door who sought to lay hands on king hazarus as we found in chapter 2 the bible says the king said what honor and dignity had been done to Mordecai for this, for saving my life. And the king's servants that ministered unto him said, there is nothing done for him. The king said, who is in the court? Follow this story carefully. Now a man was come into the outward court of the king's house to speak unto the king. So he came into the court to speak to the king about hanging and destroying Mordecai. The king's servant said unto him, Behold, Haman standeth in the court. And the king said, Let him come in. Now our lesson begins. So Haman came in, and the king said unto him, What shall be done unto the man whom the king delighted to honor? Watch the character of pride. Now Haman thought in his heart, to whom would the king delight to honor more than to myself? Next verse. And Haman answered the king, For the man whom the king delighted to honor, do the following. Number one, let the royal apparel be brought which the king used to wear. Are you seeing that this is a wicked man who would have killed the king himself later on? Because everything he wanted was what the king wore. This man was a dangerous man. It was only a matter of time. He would kill the king himself. Do not forbear with evil. You will always give it the power to multiply. Are we together? Let the royal apparel. Look at him describing this. Believing he would be the one to enjoy it. The royal apparel be brought. Which the king used to wear. And the horse that the king rided upon. What a man. And the crown which the king set on his head. Now, you look at that kind of description. I am asking you, give me a picture by privilege of relationship. How should I honor this man? And he's saying, strip yourself. Remove your robe. Give the man. Remove. <laughs> now, watch this. And let this apparel and horse be delivered to the hand. Of one of the king's most noble princes. And they may array the man without whom the king delighted to honor. And bring him on horseback through the streets of the city. Watch pride 
describing his destruction and proclaim before him thus shall it be done to the man whom the king delighted to honor this is always the end of pride the king said to Haman make haste and take the apparel and the horse as thou hast said and do even so to Mordecai let me tell you I don't know about you people have fallen and died because of shock doctors will tell us that there is a way you can be so impacted psychologically we need to commend Mordecai for not even falling to die because with this the, with this kind of expectation he he stretched his intelligence and his artistry describing everything his heart ever wanted and the king said you will be the one to do it unfortunately the one to do it to is Mordecai do you know what it means I, I could imagine him dressing Mordecai and looking at him and Mordecai said you didn't do this well you clip this properly this is not how the king looks God resisted the proud that even if you are the king's friend it does not exempt you from the disaster of pride you would think being a king's friend would immune you from the danger of pride is someone learning please give us that story we're learning a lesson a very simple lesson this morning let nothing fail that thou hast spoken of next verse the bible says then took her man the apparel in shame and sadness and arrayed mordecai and brought him on the horseback through the street of the city and proclaimed before him thus shall be done to the man whom the king delighted to honor next verse now this right here is what I want us to learn hear what the Bible said and Mordecai came again to the king's gate do you know what this means after the entire honor riding on the king's horse with the king's crown wearing the king's robe with a loud ovation all over 127 provinces you would think he would be too embarrassed to return back to his place of assignment the bible says when all that was done he returned back to the gate this is the lesson this morning where he found you is where you should remain if staying at the gate was where my honor started from then it will be foolish to be too embarrassed to leave that place. I do not know about you, but it will take the grace of God under this kind of condition to return back. The same people who said, congratulations Mordecai, you are now the king's new friend, would now pass the gate and you have to open the door for them. And they said, what suddenly happened? Did you lose favor with the king? And Mordecai, please keep that scripture, came again to the king's gate. When God begins to lift you, when God begins to announce you, when God begins to promote you, when God begins to make your name great, learn a lesson from Haman and learn a lesson from Mordecai once upon a time her man was not the king's friend there had to be a time in his life when he began to grow to the point where he was the king's friend and he forgot he forgot and now mordecai was about to have his own test if mordecai forgot you would be surprised that he would have faced the same tragedy that her man had but Mordecai was wise the Bible says after all of that honor I could imagine Mordecai having all kinds of people giving him little papers can you help us talk to the king for a contract can you now that you have become the king's new man and Mordecai said I'm not about all of this thank you the God of heaven for lifting me but I will go back to the place of my assignment 
I will go back to the place where honor found me. I will go back to the place where prosperity found me. Listen to me very carefully. I submit to you in all honesty that it is difficult to return to the gate when you've ridden on the king's horse. Anyone who tells you it just happens like that is in ignorance or is lying. Are we together? It takes a lot of stamina. There are times where returning back to the gate almost equals the perception of defeat to you. Why will I go back to my knees again? Now that I have ministry working, do I have to fast like I did before? Do I have to pray like I did before? Do I have to greet? I was watching Reverend Akila just holding mama and greeting her and honoring Dr. Panam. And I said, can you imagine? He came and sat on the floor. And now God has exalted and honored this man. Many of us will not even have the humility to acknowledge these people. Or will acknowledge them as colleagues. And just say, you give me a high five. God use you and brush it away. There are many young people today, you make 1 million, 10 million, not your parents, not your pastor, no one else can talk to you. We are gods of ourselves. After all, I have it now. Learn a lesson from her man. No matter how high you rise, you are not too far from going down. You can never rise so high that it becomes impossible to go down. In fact, the higher you rise, the more dangerous it is when you fall. If I fall from this speaker down, I may not injure myself. But if I fall from a plane, I may not live to tell the story. Are we together? So Haman, by himself, began to describe the process of his own defeat and failure. At the end of it, you would read that it was the same Haman that was hung on the gallows that he dug and built to kill Mordecai. Pride is dangerous, but humility is powerful. Let's define humility. What does it mean to be humble? Please write this down. Humility is not refusing. We have to clear the air now. Humility is not refusing to acknowledge that God has helped you. No. Humility is not refusing to enjoy the blessings and the honor that comes with your assignment or the grace that has been given to you. That is not humility. But this is humility. The public acknowledgement of God as the basis for your achievement the public acknowledgement of God as the basis for your results, the basis for your achievement. The wisdom to recognize and acknowledge this is humility. That behind House on the Rock 20 years, yes, there is a man who represents the leadership, but behind that man, is a mighty God standing by him like a mighty terrible warrior and granting him access to move forward men do not move forward just because they want to there is a God that helps men are we together humility is the public acknowledgement of God the God of the heavens as the basis for everything we are and everything we have so, when the grace of God and the glory of God begins to speak and manifest in and through your life, my message for you this morning is remember. Remember. You know why? It is harder to remember when you are distracted by your results. Results can be distracting. The applauds of men, as sincere and well-meaning as it is, can be distracting. You have to create systems around your life that force you to remember. To remember the one who took me from the dunghill and now brought me before princes. To remember the one who gave me the leverage of his grace to rise and thrive and excel. To remember the one who kept me. 
because except the Lord builds a house the Bible says the builders build but in vain except the Lord watches over the city the watchmen watch it but in vain he says it is vain to wake up early and to sleep late at night only to eat the bread of sorrow but that he giveth his beloved sleep make up your mind from this morning and let it be a foundational truth and a pillar in your life that no matter where you lift me oh god no matter what you do through me in ministry in business i will let the world know that you are the basis for my results that when the spotlight is on you you become and remain an usher that directs them to his majesty can i tell you this if you make up your mind that your life would reveal the glory and the grace of God, then he will keep giving you the platform to reveal the glory and the grace of God. And I, if I be lifted up from the earth, he says, I will draw all men to myself. And so whilst we celebrate with Reverend Akila, his dear wife, and the leadership of House on the Rock, Joss, our prayer for him and for everyone is that God will burn this message in his heart. God will burn this message in the heart of the leadership and the membership. That if there is anything worth celebrating, make sure that in all of the accolades and the acknowledgements, it ends with God. The King of kings and the helper of man. The one who can lift. The one who exalts. And to every man of God here, to everyone who has come to celebrate it is an opportunity for you to search your own life and be very determined that for the rest of my life my life will reflect the glory of God but that whilst he celebrates me and lifts me and gives me a chance to represent him to the nations I will remain humble humility comes from this revelation that without him, I can do nothing. Do not make the mistake of Haman. Embrace the wisdom of Mordecai. That after all of the celebrations, you still go back to your knees. Let me tell you this as I wrap up. It's a practice that I do and God is my witness. No matter what... You know, people many times when I return from a meeting, any meeting, and people try to acknowledge the wonderful things that God did, usually they would ask me, so how was the meeting? And I say, fine. They say, what do you mean by fine? Give us details. We watched. I mean, look at the mighty things and I tell them, fine. Fine is enough. Everything you want to say is captured in that word, fine. The meeting was not bad. Jesus was glorified. End of discussion. And I stand before the mirror and I look at myself. Truth, I'm telling you. And I say, Mr. Man, may it never get to you that this was done by your own strength. I talk to myself. I would kneel at the side of my bed and say, thank you. Father, that boy that you raised has returned back to say thank you. They may call me all kinds of names, but I'm returning as that same Mordecai. to say thank you for the healings thank you for the miracles and while you're on your knees there are text messages coming apostle you are this you are that this is mighty can you imagine what God has done I know if only you speak my situation will change and I tell him Lord save me from the distraction of this deception the people may be sincere but I know what this can do if you do not help me can I tell you the safest place, the most secured place is on your knees. We stand by kneeling. We stabilize when we are on our knees. Do not get too far from the ground. It will be deception for your fall. You do not fall when you are already on the ground. You only fall when you are above. Be careful. When God lifts you, let your knees remain saying thank you. Now wherever you are in the next one minute, I want you to just lift up a voice of thanksgiving and acknowledgement to the God of heaven. May I request that you count your blessings. 
name them one by one just a minute for this if you do not have anything to say thank you for you are not a Christian thank him for life thank him for grace thank him for house on the rock thank him for his mercies if the Lord had not been by our side now may Israel say in one minute you are saying thank you You're the Savior, the one you say has come to worship you, the one you say has come to worship you. for the grace to consistently acknowledge God in the presence of men as the basis for all that you are and all that you will become please lift your voice and pray no matter what you do in and through my life let it be clear to men that you are the doer may I be vocal about it may I be unashamed about it Someone is praying. And with our hands lifted up, we will worship our King. And with our hands lifted up, we come before you rejoicing. With our hands lifted up, to the sky and the world wonders why we just tell them we love you oh we just tell them now in one minute can you pray for Reverend Akila 
and his precious wife and the family I was watching him while he stood here and I was blessing the Lord for his life he said I thank my God always with every remembrance of you that every time we remember him it will be for good is someone praying for your pastor are you praying for this man of God cry from the depth of your heart continue to lift him oh God and show him mercy continue to lift his wife pray for his children pray for the family Oh, let him escape as the bird from the snare of the fowler, from the deceitfulness of pride. Save him from the deception of pride. That he will ever remain humble like Mordecai. May he always be at the gate ministering to the king. Even if and when he rides upon the horse of the king, even when he wears the robe of the king, even when he wears the crown of the king, may he return back to his place of assignment, his place of fellowship. Now pray for house on the rock, Joss. Let it be from the depth of your heart. Lord, the staying power, that as you lift this ministry, as you lift this vision, Grant them the grace to be and remain humble. Is someone praying? The grace to be and the grace to remain humble. For God himself resisted the proud, but he gives grace. Grace for greater glory he gives to the humble. Are you still praying? Just one more minute. The grace to be humble. The grace to be humble. Even in the midst of the acknowledgements. The grace to stay humble. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. It is my prayer this morning. That this would not just be. An emotional message from a man of God it is my prayer that you would add this and store this truth in your heart and may it become a guiding principle for your life it is a powerful secret that sustains grace that sustains impact in addition to your prayer in addition to faith like we learned in addition to death to self like we learned yesterday you must add to these things humility genuine humility let us pray father we thank you for your word we thank you for your power we thank you for your grace thank you for house on the rock thank you for reverend Akila and his dear wife 20 years of impact even by the spirit Thank you for the grace that keeps. Thank you for the grace that lifts. Thank you for the stamina to endure. Lord, we bring thanks before you from the depth of our hearts, rejoicing with him and even the church family for the things that you have done, for the battles that you have won. We declare that only you are deserving of our praise and so we glorify you. You have taught us this morning the wisdom from the life of Mordecai grant us grace to be practitioners of this truth grant us grace to live by this value system that it pays to be and to stay humble that whilst you lift us and whilst men acknowledge your doings and your workings in and through our lives may we never fall prey to the temptation of pride and vain glory may we never never fall into that temptation grant us grace oh god to be and to remain humble and whilst we remain humble we pray that you will keep lifting us in the name of jesus therefore i declare over house on the rock in the name that is above all names go from glory to glory go from grace to grace go from increase to increase 
I prophesy upon you that the lines are fallen for you in pleasant places and you have a goodly heritage. Every family connected to this vision, I prophesy Psalm 112. Blessed is the Lord, the man that delighted in the Lord, who feareth the Lord. Your seed shall be mighty upon earth. The generations of the upright shall be blessed. The Bible says wealth and riches shall be in your house and your righteousness endures forever. I decree and declare that the secrets of the Lord are upon your tabernacle. In the name of Jesus Christ, you walk upon your high places. A thousand may fall by your side and ten thousand by your right hand. None shall harm you. With your eyes will you see the reward of the wicked. But as for you, the Lord is your inheritance. is your portion even in the land of the living. In the name of Jesus Christ. Your gates remain continually open to receive the forces of the Gentiles where you have been deserted so that no man would pass through you. I call you an eternal excellency, a joy of many generations. In the name of Jesus Christ, I decree and declare that even in old age you will be fat and flourishing. The fullness of your days you will fulfill. In the name of Jesus Christ, your hands remain lifted. My God stands before you like a mighty terrible one. In the name of Jesus Christ, go from glory to glory. Go from grace to grace. By this time next year, return 10 times better. In the name of Jesus Christ, may my God lift you even above your contemporaries. May the oil of gladness rest upon your head that lifts you above your fellows. In the name of Jesus Christ, the Lord grant you speed. The Lord grant you increase. May he increase you more and more. In the name of Jesus, you become like a field that the Lord has blessed. Indeed, a well-watered garden. In the name of Jesus, that when men say there is a casting down, for you it shall be that there is a lifting up. In the name of Jesus, I command the gates of the city to be opened for you. You will suck honey out of the rock. In the name of Jesus Christ, destruction and wastage will be far from your life. The voice of melody will become your inheritance even in this season in the name of jesus the lord bless you in jesus name i pray thank you very very much May the lord bless you. hello scriptures exhort us from the book of proverbs it says my son attend to my sins incline thy ears to my words let them not depart from thy eyes and keep them in the midst of thee as you have listened to this message, we believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well. That you will keep these words in the midst of your heart. That no matter the circumstance, your eyes are going to be fixed on these words. And as you have been blessed, we will tell you to share this message. Be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed. And then subscribe to this channel for us because we have loads of videos. We have loads of content that is going to make you blessed. That is going to set you on course. That is going to set you ablaze. And don't forget to like for us. Thank you.